What's going on guys? Cody from Motorcycle MD and tis the season to replace your battery. We are coming out of spring and you may have gone out to your garage to find out your bike will not start. So the topic of purchasing a new battery or upgrading your bike's battery to let's say a lithium ion battery may be at the forefront of your mind. Now of course, most people want to put the best stuff in their bike. I don't blame you whatsoever, but putting a lithium ion battery into let's say an older bike or a bike that may not have come with one originally may just set it on fire. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? For very obvious reasons, there are pros and cons to using lithium batteries. They are extremely lightweight. They can be placed in any orientation that you can imagine and not have any problems with it whatsoever. They can discharge a large amount of power at one time when it comes to startup procedures. And they last way longer than any other common battery that you would see or purchase online, AGM, gel acid, maintenance style, maintenance free, whichever ones that you've seen and likely probably have in your bike now, they're just better. So this brings up a question. Can a lithium ion battery run in my motorcycle? In your motorcycle, can it work? Can the system function and operate how it should? This lithium ion battery is saying that it needs a completely different charger than any other charger that I have. So can my motorcycle charging system operate with this type of battery? Can it give it what it needs? And the answer to that is, well, no, yes, no, yes, no. Maybe. See, lithium ion batteries are a little bit more strict when it comes to how they are charged. Most other batteries, the ones that you would commonly see on any other motorcycles, which are just fine in how they function, have a little bit wider range of how they charge. If you've seen any videos that I've put out when it comes to checking your motorcycle's charging system with the voltmeter, there is a range that your charging system will output at a certain RPM. Most often this is checked at around 5,000 RPM and with the multimeter hooked up properly, you can then see if your charging system is A, working or B, hitting that ceiling that it should. Most cases, most bikes are around 14.5 seven maybe 15 volts that's kind of high but usually around 14.7 to 14.8 is what you should see as an output of your charging system when it comes to your bike now when it comes to putting a lithium ion battery in that beautiful instagram bike that you were trying to build let's say for an old vintage bike the problem is those charging systems are not all that good. And they're actually at this point, very old. And when you have parts that can break down over time through use like regulator rectifiers and stators and that kind of thing, well, you can set your bike on fire putting a lithium battery in there because they do not like to be overcharged whatsoever. You can greatly diminish the life of that battery just by charging that battery a little bit over what it's allowed to. Other batteries like the ones we mentioned before can do it. No battery ever should be operating at an overcharged state while the bike is running. That's why we check these type of systems out. But the lithium battery is way more susceptible to it. And if you were to purchase and spend a couple hundred dollars on a lithium battery, it is worthless for you because the lifespan is going to be greatly diminished by your lacking charging system. So the only way that you can safely say that you can put a lithium style battery in your bike is to check the charging system. And if it's an older bike, check it periodically. Generally speaking, most 12 volt lithium batteries batteries can be charged between 13, 9, 14 volts up to like 14, 6, 14, 7. And sometimes the range is even tighter than that, 14.1 to 14.6. We're talking less than a volt of difference. So with whatever battery you do decide to go with should tell you in the specifications of what type of range is a safe amount. Whereas any other battery like the Uwasa, fill type, maintenance free, they are less sensitive to that overcharging. In short bursts, the battery may not be affected as much as a lithium battery would be. The danger of overcharging is is what you're putting in your own hands. So let's say you do wanna put a lithium battery in your bike, awesome. There are some brands that you should pay attention to and that should kind of help focus where your money should be spent the most. When it comes to batteries and this specific part that you put in your motorcycle, this is one of the categories where it 100% matters how much you spend on the battery. The quality of the battery is going to be solely based around the price of it in almost all cases. Sure, there are brands that cost more, but as a Honda motorcycle technician and I have installed and replaced thousands of batteries and have seen the life of those batteries throughout my journey as being a technician, I can tell you that the price matters. And when it comes to lithium batteries, they are a pretty sophisticated design in most cases. And what you should be looking for when it comes to lithium battery purchasing is if they are designed with what's called a BMS, a battery maintenance system. Now, even this will vary from company to company. Some battery maintenance systems do a little bit more than others. Some quality battery maintenance systems will come with 
a type of regulator inside where they have a degree of how much the battery should be charged and they can push that battery or shut off charging to that battery periodically. But overcharging constantly and relying on that battery maintenance systems to do that is a bad idea. It is not a regulator rectifier. It is simply a smaller device or a safeguard or a firewall, we would say, to help mitigate as much as it can. Still, I would not rely heavily on your BMS system, but it's cool that it comes with it. Now, let's say you do have an old bike or classified as one, well, I would say 60s, 70s, 80s, a time when charging systems were kind of changing throughout the decade until we got to where we are now, which is a pretty sophisticated system. But there are upgrades that you can obviously do to the charging system of your bike. One of them being what we would call a MOSFET regulator rectifier, which is capable of maintaining a very strict charge when it comes to a lithium ion battery that you you can adapt to your old bike. It's amazing. So I'll put links in the description of place that you can kind of find these parts at, as well as a list of some good branded batteries that I would recommend for you if you do want to do this type of upgrade. Now this video is not to tell everyone that lithium battery is the way to go and you should swap your battery out. It's worth every dollar. I don't agree with that. I don't own a single bike with lithium battery and I'm not going to. Maintenance free batteries, I really don't like maintenance style batteries, the ones where you gotta like add it and take care of it over time. That's to me stone age stuff that I just don't want to do unless I have to. But AGM or the gel acid style batteries, they're awesome batteries. And I really think that the health and the longevity of the battery, besides you leaving your key on periodically, all comes down to how the battery was prepped. Low voltage for a long range, 10, 12 hours, one to two amps. I really think that that sets the batteries up for success. I've seen them last seven to 10 years. I've seen the same type of battery last a year, year and a half. It really kind of all depends. But if you live in a cold climate, I would say lithium batteries still is not a good choice. They don't do well in temperatures under 40 degrees. And one other thing that you need to take into consideration when purchasing a lithium battery is that you will also need the correct charger or maintainer for that battery. You cannot use a regular lead acid style charger for that battery. Lithium batteries like to be charged up to a certain point and then stopped. They don't want to be, oh, they don't want to trickle charge or float charge on them that will destroy that battery. Whereas lead acid batteries, it's totally fine. They can be charged up to even 15 volts in some cases, but when it comes to the lithiums, they do not like it. So there are some factors that you need to consider when it comes to this. That's all I really wanted to get across in this video. That being said, thank you guys so much for checking out this video. I hope it was informative. In the description or maybe a link to a PDF or something, I'll put something together for you guys when it comes to battery brands and the pros and cons of each. I think that might be helpful for you. Join the mailing list. Get updates when new videos come out. Thank you guys so much for just hanging out with me. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you'd like to work on your own motorcycle and hopefully not catch it on fire. Cody from Motorcycle MD bringing you guys some quality tips and tricks for your next build or your daily rider. See you next time. Later.